So now let's welcome in Anthony McCarron and Crystal Presti. All right, so Anthony, let's start with you. Stearns uh, might not be a fit with the Mets, but with all the talk about players who are free agents, we almost forget that the Mets don't have a president. So how do we feel about the state of the front office with Billy Epler leading the way into a pivotal offseason? Michelle, I'm fine with it. I thought Billy did a nice job, especially last offseason, bringing in the right players, the right manager to get this team on the upswing. They had a terrific year. It ended in a disappointing fashion, obviously, with the way the playoffs went. The one complaint I had, of course, and, and I think I echo many Mets fans here. I didn't like the way the trade deadline went. I don't think they went hard enough. They've won the World Series twice in franchise history. This was a time to strike, and they didn't do it. Now, in fairness to Billy, though, that could be something that was directed by ownership because Steve Cohen has talked about wanting to be, you know, the Dodgers of the East Coast and be a player development monster and, and keep prospects and then churn them into the major league team and, and go from there. So maybe he wasn't in a position to make a big deal using big prospects to get really good players that the Mets needed at the deadline. So that's not on Billy. That's on everybody uh, with the Mets. So look, I'm, I'm fine with the way things are. You don't necessarily need this. The baseball president of baseball operations thing is is a relatively new phenomenon in terms of baseball history. Like it feels like you're just lumping a bunch of executives into a front office together and you give them fancy titles so they have a better title than they had in their previous job. Is that necessary all the time? No. What's necessary is that the guy who's running baseball operations has to have the ear of the owner. Clearly, with what Steve Cohen told Andy, he's got Steve Cohen's ear. Billy's got Steve Cohen's ear. That's the biggest thing. I totally agree. I, I think we've gotten to a point now where sometimes it's just too many cooks in the kitchen, right? And and I know that's sort of, like you said, the new phenomenon. I think it makes a little bit more sense maybe in an organization where, you know, the GM's a younger guy or younger, you know, up-and-comer that's being groomed or something like that where, you know, Theo Epstein's been a president of baseball ops kind of situation. So, you know, Billy Epler has some experience. He's been around the league. Maybe it didn't go so well with the Angels, but I think everyone was very pleased with what he was doing up in until you mentioned the trade deadline, that was really the first instance in where I felt like there was some criticism. And, and you know, I, I agree. I, I think that that was an ownership situation. Steve Cohen's talked about what he wants to build here, long-term, sustainable success. So I get it. From a fan standpoint, they haven't seen a lot of winning. Like Anthony said, you don't, you know, you don't get, like, that many opportunities to potentially put together a World Series contender. But obviously the Mets are looking big picture here. So I don't necessarily worry that there's not a president in place. You have a veteran experienced guy that I thought did a good job last offseason. He has a lot of questions and a lot of work to do this offseason. But based on what we saw last winter, I have no reason to believe they won't you know, come through with another strong offseason and put themselves in a good spot heading into spring training. Totally. And Chris, the Yankees uh, also might not have a general manager in a few weeks when Brian Cashman's contract is up. If you could choose anyone, who do you think would be a good fit in the Bronx? Yeah, I mean, to me, it's going to have to be a big fish, right? I, it's, the, it's the New York Yankees. I mean, Brian, it was all Brian Cashman's all we've known for so long now. And, you know, maybe there is somebody within the organization. Like, a lot of times you hear about the next person that's – I don't hear that much with the Yankees. Maybe there is somebody that's sort of next in line to take over. But if I'm looking for, you know, a big name, a big fish, you know, we talked about – Theo Epstein potentially having <laughs> that dinner. I thought you might go there. Well, I mean, listen, it's the obvious name, right? What he did with the Red Sox, what he did with the Cubs. You know, the Yankees are obviously an iconic franchise as well. So you could see maybe the, the lore of, hey, you know, you broke two curses. Right. Not that there's a curse <laughs> with the Yankees, but things have not gone well or up to expectations for – you know, the better part of almost, what, two decades now, save right. the one World Series season. So I know he kind of flirted a little with Steve Cohen. He seems happy with what he's doing with Major League Baseball, some of the rule changes we're going to see. But you think it would be a big job he's got to come back for, and obviously the Yankees would be that. He's like the most wanted man in the game, sure. right? I mean, you know, he could be the next commissioner. Who knows, what, you know, with the way, the, how highly regarded he is. Um, you know, I think they do have maybe some guys, uh, people in place who, who could do the job uh, if Cashman is no longer there. First of all, he'd be my first choice to remain. I know that doesn't make some Yankee fans happy, but that's the way it is. They get there every single year. At some point, I think they're going to break through, and he's been the architect of those of those teams. Uh, you know, Jim Hendry was the GM of the Cubs. He's a, a well-regarded advisor in, in the Yankee uh, front office. Uh, Tim Nehring is another one. Uh, Mike Fishman, uh, their director of, uh, he's an assistant general manager. He's their analytics big brain in there. Gene Afterman has been around for years. These are all potential candidates from, from inside, and I feel like Hal Steinbrenner is a guy who likes the comfort of knowing who he's dealing with. Yeah. So I think that somebody within the organization would maybe even have a foot forward uh, 
if this comes to pass and we don't have Cashman around anymore. I'm surprised nobody said Eric Neander, but I, I agree with you, Anthony. I think sometimes the obvious, an the obvious answer is right in front of you. There's no reason that Brian Cashman uh, shouldn't be back. Anthony Celo, always a pleasure. Thank you guys so much.